Immortals as a heavy favorite versus a lot of teams. That said, I don't put Mouse Sports as a strong favorite either. I, I, I really feel like either team could take this, and that should make it exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you in uh, there as well, just because I, it's this one of the matchups, I think one of the only matchups so far that I really feel like I just cannot predict how it's, it's going like, to go. I I'm, I'm think I'm leaning slightly towards Mouse Sports, but it's so hard to say, which is good. As you say, we'll let the action do the talking for us in that sense, and Immortals will be with two grenade men, which is awesome to see, and that's uh, a quick push hit there from Nico. He's going to spot everything, and this is a big problem because now Mouse Sports are already going to be going for the rotation, the boost around the back here. However, the bomb looks like it's sure. No, the bomb's gone down in the smoke. That that could be really awkward, but Fels will collect it. Henny with a nasty surprise there for Dennis. Gets the range now with the USP as well. Two flashes onto Steel. Nico, he sees a gun and he finds a face. That's enough for him. All of a sudden, Henny's on his own. You hear the screams from Mouseports. They were supercharged before the match started and it continues with a lovely retake of the A bomb sites. Yeah, and it all really started from, uh, I think it was Nico actually who pushed. Uh, it, it didn't even really push. He just, he just shouldered into a main and he saw like three or four guys and so that was just that early warning system that allowed Mouseports to have a lot of additional time before Immortals could get the bomb down, could get set up and even then the you know the bomb going down it's like then everything's cool the Immortals guys can just you know take some post-point positions but the, it went down so they couldn't do that too quickly. I think I made a mistake actually when I was talking about the tweet in the previous match I think it was uh, I think it was Dennis on Mouseports who said it was literally do or die Maybe Ely can find that tweet if and <laughs> show me if I'm correct or not. But uh, yeah, it seems the Mouseports might be feeling the pressure in this match. Good start for them, though. Both these teams are two to one. So there will be no elimination in this, but one, one will go two to two. Chris J with, oh, he got two for one. Speaking of two for one. That's a great way to have an and start an anti-eco round. Lucas and Bolts remain. Now it's their turn to pick up the scout. The scout, that made Chris J famous in the first place. Could it be the enemy now? Maybe not. Lucas doesn't look good for this. Triple peak comes in almost. Mouse bots prevail again. And see ya. Very, very sexy stuff. Nice. From Chris J straight away. Sexy football. Root it, etc. So there's a tweet from Lowell. And there is Lowell. Nice. Look at that coordination from production. That's awesome. They only need one victory indeed. If you skip the analyst segments just because you know you don't like listening to the analyst guys and you just look at the games, then indeed this is a match which will have the winner qualifying to play as a challenger team in the next major in January of 2017. Now, all AKs for Immortals. Couple of grenades. They're going to go straight for the A play, but Nico, with his just so typical quintessential door play, is just foiling this plan. Yeah, this has shut down so far for Immortals. Phelps in a strong position, but Spiddy's waiting for this. He's looking for it, and Phelps may look the wrong way. He may get taken out for free. Indeed, he will. MP7, no less. Bonus money also for Spiddy. Immortals, two plays left. They don't have the bomb. Chris J's in the back. And their time is limited. And that's enough there for Chris J just to hold down the back. Or is it? Because they can't really get into the bomb site. The bomb I mean they have to go get the bomb. It's so open, there's no grenades for them. They have no health. So as long as Chris J doesn't push and die, they have no escape. There's just nothing nothing for them to do. A smoke comes in to make it even more impossible to collect the bomb. So again, they can just the ideal thing here is just for you know Chris J to wait out there and just allow immortals if they want to wait, allow them to wait and kill them after time. But uh, immortals will want to avoid that situation, so eventually they're just gonna have to move and it should be easy for Mouse Wars to clean this up. I think there might have been an opportunity for him to get this, that bomb in the smoke, actually. Maybe it would have exposed them. Headshot comes in from Lucas with all of 5 HP. He needs to be perfect. Stereo frags, though, coming in from Mouseports to finally clean up the end of that round. Look good for ages. Immortals, though, he got two kills out of nowhere. Chris J, he made his way into main, but he couldn't see the player boosted. Um, had no idea where he was getting shot from. Just chose to back off, play it safe. Still became dangerous, but ultimately, it's Mouseports with the clean sheet. It's definitely a good start for them. And I've always felt like Mouse Balls are one of the teams that's... How they look when they have a bad economy is just 
kind of out of proportion as to how they look when they have a good start. Like, I feel like they're, they're not as good as some teams at managing their economy when they're in spots where they have to make marginal buys and all this kind of stuff and they get off to a bad start. So it's always very nice to see Mouseports with a good start for them and I'm sure for their fans as well. Uh, but, but Immortals can never count them out in any situation. There's so much skill on this team. And maybe they can get a couple of frags here with the Deagles. They've got two Deagles, Tech 9. No grenades, but if they, if they spot ahead here, perhaps there can be a frag. But Chris J making life somewhat difficult there towards B Storage. Just denying any fragging scenarios, it seems. And all will, will be well for Mouse Sports. These are great rounds for Mouse Sports in terms of building that economy. Well, it would have been. Actually, they did a few plays in the last round as well, so, so uh, it could be a lot better for Mouse Sports on reflection, but could be, barely be better in terms of score. 4 to 0 now. Immortals coming back on the buy, and they really want Henny on that AWP, and indeed he is, but at what cost? He's got no Kevlar. Christian AWP as well. Let's have a look and see if uh, if Immortals can right the ship before it starts to sink. No forwards. Well, Lucas had a super forward spawner, interestingly. So in some other teams, you would see the AWP thrown to him so we could try and pick off somebody moving towards the uh, the white box on short, but there is no such play early from our sports at the very least. Dennis moves there after the smoke goes down. So they know what power Henny has and they will respect that for the time being. Oh, that is nice. Little wow. double nades there. It's rare that you see that just straight up make the kill. So, early advantage from Mouse Sports. That is so, so, such a relief for them. Again, going into this fifth round and get, starting off on the CT side with already killing a man. And Immortals are trying to play the picks. Th this might end up being an even slower round now because Immortals, th they're going to really feel very pressured to get a pick here before they make a move. They don't want to play at a four versus five if they can avoid it. But that might be all that they're av available to do because Mouse Sports are starting to play much more passively. There's only really Dennis who's poking into mid every so often by White Box. And uh, Chris J obviously on an angle, trying to play it fairly safe. I want to give a shout out to Existence because you saw Lucas throwing the Molotov into the vent through the, uh, through the smoke. Existence, uh, watching Titan demos back in the day, had full grenade executes behind the smoke in the middle area. It's nuts. I saw Chris J tagged. But that's not enough for Immortals. They're a man down, and they are down on time as well. Dennis with the forward position towards A. Mass Bolts have the information. We've got a rotation, gravity, bringing the CTs down towards B. Will they get there in time, though? Lowell and a teammate on the site. They've got the counter flashes. They've got the Molotovs as well. If they get smokes on front of the site, it'll be even worse for the Ts. Finally, the charge comes in, but still no frags for Immortals. Down goes Steel. Spidey still holding angles. Lucas heavily tagged. So it's Chris J, though. Things could spin around, but now it's Bolts alone versus three. 12 seconds, you can't plant a bomb. This is surely going to go the way of Mass Bolts. And I think we, what we just saw here as well was one of the weaknesses that you see of the Immortals team. They're not they're the most strategical or, or tactical team. And, and that double nade pick at the start of the round, that set Immortals back. It put them in a spot where they needed to be able to take map control in middle, like with, with the team. And then to try, uh, decide to like build out of that with, you know, in other tactical plays around the map to try to open up an, uh, an option towards A or towards B that they could then play off of that mid control with. But again, Immortals are a team that they favor playing the picking style, even in spots where it's really not that optimal. And you can see that they put themselves in a spot where they had almost no time to go to the B bomb site because Mass Sports played it smart. They didn't give Immortals a chance to play the picks, which is very important to understand when you're playing against Immortals, I, th I feel. Yeah, definitely respecting their opponents. And we see attention to detail, not moving towards short, uh, short A until the smoke is down in the middle area. Just not gonna, they're, they're making less errors than, than uh, Yanko enjoys watching them for, historically. Immortals still uh, on the big fat zero, and he's left himself money to buy the AWP in a coming round. Nicely timed smoke from Nico. That will be a problem for these teasers. They're going to charge straight through the black bank down, but that's what is there. There's a crossfire spray coming in. Nico cleaning up Lowell as well. Lucas is the last man standing. He's going to wait for a CT to overextend, but they have the bomb. They have no need to push forward. To push forward. Yeah, this is a this is a really lovely start from Mouseport so far. And again, I, I will be looking to see whether they can continue to play it optimally. They, they definitely got a they got a little bit fortunate that their double nade was completely spot on and just nailed Phelps straight away in the 
the second proper buy round of Immortals. They may not get so lucky in the next one, so that's that's where I'm going to really be looking to see how Mars Force will play the decisions to try to get the advantages and play against the style of Immortals. But Lucas, he's trying to do some extra damage. His uh, overall uh, denied more than one kill. And Mars Force, they're going to be so happy with that anyway. I mean, they've got some good bank behind them. Average of six and a half thousand dollars, perhaps, or six k around about for the entire team. They're in a really good spot. But now, now this is this is the interesting one. If, imagine if Immortals lose this. That could be an eight zero start. It could be. But on the plus side, you know, we saw issues on cash earlier of NIP. But on the plus side, either team who loses this will be two for two. This is not an elimination match, but it is a uh, a match to qualify for the major. And Mass Sports are really supercharged. Chris J spotting some players or spotting a player perhaps. He was waiting for the flashbang to come in, but bolts. No, it was a trap, just a smoke. That's crazy, isn't it? And and now this is an interesting thing because we get to see now. The first time that Mouseports have had a disadvantage really early on. And also, it, it, we have to see how Immortals can play the advantage that they have. They've already got that pick. They don't need another one necessarily. A lot of teams would just try to set up the attack on a bomb site at this point or try to get some additional map control. And another frag comes in. Mouseports take a risk. Immortals are playing it slow. Doesn't go their way. It should be easy for Immortals to close this down now with the, just, just attacking a bomb site altogether. One minute on the clock with which to do it. Phelps facing the wall in case a pop flash comes in. He has a teammate in for support. They see Henny, but he can't get the kill onto Nico. The single scope, not going to be easy to pick that head. And indeed, Henny will get the kill. Sorry, uh, Nico will get the kill there. Steel picked off as well. Maybe they've waited too long. Nico in position on the high ground, but oh, he moves away. That might be a problem. Phelps making his way onto the side. Still got Lucas holding angle, but that's dirty from Nico. Maybe sensing a flank, takes it down immediately. Five versus three, and now it's three versus two. It's getting really awkward now. Immortals have really fluffed their coordination into the site with the numbers advantage. Kind of peeking one by one, giving a chance to come back into this one. Nico's going to hit the gun there. Bisp 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 going to be the one to get both kills. That is a round that Immortals should never never be losing. They go they go five versus three, and then they're peeking one by one into the A bomb site and, and just getting picked off there. That is, that's not how you want to do this. If you, I mean, there's just so many ways to play that better for Immortals. And sure, you don't expect them to be one of the teams that are like very, very amazing from like a coordination and strategy tactical perspective. But that's a, a basic error that's cost them massively. And they do have another buy here, but it's not nearly as good as the last round. With a play like that, you have to wonder if they're feeling the pressure of the occasion. So close to qualifying for the major. Some people feel like they should have qualified before. But here they are. And now you've got those long smokes coming in. It's a long rotation if you force behind it, but they're going to have Steel offering what could be a fake. No lurkers towards B though. Lowell playing his hand slowly. Only good for the one frag, but he's got info for his team. Will it be enough? Steel running out of bullets, taken down by the Deagle. One player left. That's Henny. He's got the bomb, but he's against four. Mouse also are in very good space. You can probably hear them cheering through our microphones. They are right next to us as well. They are definitely feeling amazing at the moment. And Again, it's we've seen some we've seen some good play from Mouse Sports. They haven't had to make any hard decisions, but they've been playing the basics quite well, to be honest. And it's it's Immortals who've had because it's Immortals are in much more of a, a volatile situation as we saw that they get that five versus three, and that's a round that they should be winning. And so to see a mistake made there, and for it that to mean eight zero for Mouse Sports, does does that mistake compound itself? Will Immortals make more mistakes now? Speaking of mistakes, Massport's very excited, but look how forward Chris J spawn is. He has probably the best spawn you can get on the CT side. Bearing in mind the mortals are on the eco now, you have to wonder if if Massports are expecting a buy, then maybe Chris J goes for an aggressive play here. If they have the read that it's uh, an eco round from Massports, then you would expect him to go for a more passive play and use that range. But he's going for the forward play, and he's very ahead of his teammate towards B. Fortunately for him, it's only bolts towards B bombsite, and he's taken down immediately. That's the that's the scary thing with Chris J. I think you highlighted that quite well because he's probably going for that peak regardless of what <laughs> what the opposing team has. It's as an author, if you get a really good spawn. You, you kind of don't want to waste it. It feels like a crime. <laughs> it feels like a crime to waste the spawn. But uh, we're going to have that five versus four. Chris J was successful. Nice incendiary. That's that's going to make it a little bit harder for Steel to do anything for the time being. 
And uh, Slow's gonna have Tavs on middle as well. He's gonna spot everybody going through. He's gonna call to his teammates. Okay, short is open right now. And uh, Chris J and Nika in position to deal with it. Three plays left for a Mortis. Chris J will not be deterred by that smoke. Low with a great hold. Goes straight to the box as well. The safer option just to avoid going down. Keeping an eye on the CT economy. No need to die for no reason. Nine to zero for Immortals. The cleanest of sheets. They are the uh, Russell's are playing great right now. It's it's good to see. Immortals again. It's, it's a buy round, and a lot of their buy rounds come down to the, their ability to get that opener pick, that opening pick. They often take are able to take map control more based on that, or develop plays more based on that, as opposed to their use of coordination and utility most of the time. So here we go. Lucas will try to get himself a uh, quick pot flash there to deny any early aggression into the warehouse in middle. And uh, immediately, once again, lower straight into the vents. There's two, there's actually three players towards B at the start of this round for Mouse Sports. Chris J finds himself a gap. We'll see if anybody walks into it. Bolt's holding a passive angle outside B for the time being, letting his team do the rest of the work. He didn't always want to be uh, facing in various angles at the same time on the T side. Low will be forced from his position. That was uh, an issue that Jacob always had to face when he was playing CT for phase, but always did a good job of escaping into Checkers of Act, being taken down by Lurker outside B, as Immortals just had. No kills for Immortals yet. Minutes on the clock. The bomb's still in T Warehouse for the time being. Nico takes Henny in the middle of nowhere, and no one's in position to respond still. Oh, Makes man. his way towards Quad, but he's going to get wrecked as well. One by one, they face Nico. One by one, they go down. Yeah, just finding all those beautiful angles, just knowing exactly what to do in the Matrix is Nico, as often he ever is. And now, we have, do have a forward position here for Phelps. He's got himself in checkers. Flash has come in, though, from the CTs. Chris Jay now, he might be offered up some frags. Indeed, Lucas is served up. Chris Jay will gobble him up. And now it's just be Bolts looking for the trade kill. But he's got so much to deal with right now. Chris Jay pulls out the pistol, and that's going to be good enough to deal with Bolts. 10-0. Mouse Sports looking fantastic, and Immortals are in a spot where they, maybe they don't even know what to do anymore. There is mad testosterone on the Mouse Sports table right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Immortals, again, if they lose this, they're not done. But they don't want to lose this. No, they, have, they, have, they have two chances to qualify, but you always want to qualify on your first. Mouse sports, they want this badly. You've seen the tweets. And they're playing well. They're playing very well at present. Immortals not out of it just yet. This time, Chris J isn't going to get the pick. What can Bolts do to capitalize, though? He may not expect Speedy underneath the vents. And the interesting thing here as well, again, is that it, Immortals don't have a great buy. There's an AWP on the floor there. They can be collected by Bolts, but they don't have an, almost any utility. Speedy there, will he get taken down? No, Dennis comes in with a pop flash. Beautiful hole here towards B. Bolts try to make the individual play. Phelps try to help him out, but Mouse Sports had a very nice setup. They had three players to respond to that, despite going down a man early on into the round. Yeah, That's actually nuts. Immortals know there are three towards B. They need to capitalize on this. They've got a player towards Squeaky, one main and one in mid, but they're not splitting the A site. They know there are three players towards B, but they're giving the CTs time to rotate, and it's not going to work. Lucas alone in the middle area. The numbers game not working out for him, and now the numbers of Immortals running down. They still haven't got a bomb planted just yet. Steel has to make great individual play, and he will. Two kills for him. Just the t tiniest of gaps in that Molotov only starts to hurt him after the bomb goes down. Two versus two. Galil to save the day from Steel. He's down to 16, though, and that's going to be him done. And he against Spiddy and Lowell gets caught in the side. Another round to Mouse Sports. And you can just you can just hear them screaming right now. They're in this mood where they want to, they want to win in a way where they just completely crush Immortals. They want the 16-0 so badly, and they believe it. Give no edges. Take everything. Pillage. Conan, what is best in life? I don't think you know the... Yeah, you don't know. Do you know the... You know The it. response? I know it's... But yes, that is... <laughs> you're not going to say it then. I, I, I don't know. It's a bit, it's a bit risky. <laughs> moving <laughs> moving <laughs> swiftly on. <laughs> Let's do that. Thank you, though, for taking us uh, on that journey. Moving swiftly on. Mouse sports with 11 rounds <laughs> to the zero <laughs> of Immortals. Oh, boy. 
2 1 2 set up from the Mouse Sports side. I feel like at this point, if Mouse Sports give up one round in this half, they're going to be pissed. So two players by door, you know, typically the only the only reason to do this is if you intend to hit the A bomb site. Because otherwise, you know, playing two players from that position doesn't really make sense from a harassment perspective. So Immortals, they've got deep presence actually towards checkers. And there are actually three players here towards B. And that is something that Mouse Force have been very quick to do. And we can see the push comes in. It's Dennis though and Nico who are holding it down at the moment. Steel survives. He's got the bomb as well. And that can be planted there on the A bomb site. But he's alone. And it's a 26 HP. If they toss nades in there, he's in a lot of trouble. Ball for the whole down middle. Gets it with the spray down. Chris J falls, as does Lowell, leaving Nico. One versus three for the clutch. Nico absolutely nails bolts. There's still two more players to go. He realizes that one player's on the rotation and he can try to charge into the side. That smoke's going to be a huge problem, though. That smoke's going to buy time for Lucas to come in. He's coming in from mid. Nico's going to keep pressing. Otherwise, oh, that flashbang is perfect. Down goes Lucas. He's got. He just needs one bullet from the Deagle, but he's got the AK now. Will he see the shadow skill? He will. It's through the corner of the wall. They will not give up any rounds, Mouse Boss. 12 to 0. I've never seen them this animated and this loud. Like every single player screaming. That's, that's, that's a beautiful thing. Ah, oh, you got to. That flashbang is a stroke of luck, but Steel's position, he's too close to the corner, to the left of Nico, and, uh, well, he's hes showing for one. I guess he thought Nico was coming around the side, so it was a great play by Nico to go on the high ground. But also your shadow shows if you go too close to that angle. No shadow required, though. Nico just too strong. Too strong. Phelps hasn't got a single kill. And he's got one kill. Well, it's... A really tall order. This is even worse than uh, the domination we saw for NIP versus Vegas Squadron earlier. Mouse Sports are just tearing it up right now. That's the thing, like, Mouse Sports have a lot of clutch potential, but they've not been put in that spot very often. Every time they have, they've come up aces. That To flash the guy in mid is ridiculous. Two men peeking. Lucas not prepared for that one. Especially if you pop flash into, uh, into mid. Getting the person around the corner from under the boost is always the most most difficult task. You're know saying nothing in B, I think, on the mouse sport side, but indeed there are three players heading towards B. Speedy Nico taking down elsewhere, that might pull a rotation. Okay, now this looks like a great round here for Immortals. They've got everything lined up for them. And he's going to take down Chris J. Dennis and Lowell, it falls on them. Dennis will actually be able to bully his way through the vents into checkers. Steel gets caught out by Lowell. There's a chance here now, one versus two for Lowell. Can he get into position out of this choke point in time? Just barely. Spots Phelps. Phelps goes down. Doesn't do much damage. Lowell now. He's on for this one. And he, with the AK, has the advantage. But can he make this work? 14 bullets. That's all Lowell has to work with. Can he find any? Flip comes in. Any claims around. The first round for Immortals. But, but still, it's 12 1. It is still 12 1. Uh, almost a familiar story. Minus the elimination stakes. <laughs> that is a that is a swag lord if ever I saw one. <laughs> anime, am I Super Saiyan? Then is that what he's saying? Is that how? No, I he just looked like a ridiculous character out of an anime. I think that's the. You know, you know, Japanese yakuza bosses often yeah. wear Hello Kitty tracksuit outfits because they're so swag. They can wear whatever they like. That's a true story. Henny going for that peak that we spoke about earlier, but again, the mouse bots do not cross until that smoke grenade goes down. So Mouse Sports now with a, a more passive setup towards B, and they're not really playing the vents, less mid presence. Oh, and one of the reasons is because they don't want to go too close. They know the buy is not too optimal here for Immortals. Already taking down Lucas, who had a mid deagle. And now uh, Mouse Sports are just able to play off this five versus four. Dennis with great info here. This is fantastic for Mouse Sports. They know now that no one's in A main just yet. I think he might have spotted somebody. Yeah, I, I believe Henny was spotted there. So this, this limits the options. This kind of forces Immortals to go B with that position that's forward on A main. Three members remain for Immortals. Can you imagine if they get reset on the economy? Insult to <laughs> oh, no. injury. I really can't. They're all in mid. They've picked off one mid player, but there are two mouse sports players per site. They can bide their time, keep a rough angle to see if anybody is going over towards uh, CT connector. Other than that, Immortals they are left to play for picks, essentially. 
You hear the one shot from the mouth sports release weekend. They're coordinating between short and A main. They're not giving up the angles that Henry is really looking for. That's a rare miss from Chris J. Perhaps some opportunity for Immortals. But still two on the A side. Make it one. Then it's picked off. Nico spots one on highway. Oh. But he'll get taken down. Speedy will also do. Yeah, the timing not working out well for Mouse Sports in this occasion. Oh, wow. Speedy able to get the frag there, though. Killing bolts. And now he's in onto the one versus one post plants. Now, where is Phelps going to be? He can be in so many different positions. This takes a lot of guesswork from Spitty, a lot of deduction. Great angle there from Phelps by Forklift. Finds the frag onto Spitty. Very hard position. 12 to 2. But it's still 12 rounds. It's crazy how much damage Mouseports have done on this first half. Immortals, they're on the way to giving themselves a fighting chance. We move into the last round of the first half, and we finally see some issues with the uh, economy of Mouseports. Dennis with the FAMAS, Nico with the UMP, Chris J. We'll see if he's got more than a Deagle once they uh, get running. No, he's just down to the Deagle. So, uh, Immortals are giving themselves a fighting chance. If they can win this round, which looks reasonable, reasonably likely, all things considered, if they can win that and win the pistol, then who knows? Who knows? Never over until it's over. Although, uh, this would be quite a comeback. Phelps got to be careful with his angle. You see Spiddy, if he just looks at the vent, he wouldn't see him. More about that later. This Bolt's going to ring his teammate's bell, but they've got the kills. That's what's important. So far, it's looking pretty good here for Immortals, despite losing a couple of players. The, the, every, there's players all over the place. The bomb needs to be collected here. Oh, that is really annoying. And there is a lot of space here for uh, Chris to pick up a gun. And he does have Kevlar helmet and Hundo health as well. So I don't know if there's a kit somewhere for him to pick up, but Chris Jay can get some work done here. Not going through any weapons. Or is there one on the floor here? Maybe there is. There is an AK on the floor there for Chris Jay. He's picked up the AK. And now there's trouble for the Immortal side, but perhaps not. Bolts takes him down. 12 to 3, though. That is a very sad state of affairs for the Brazilians. I have no idea how they're going to come back from this. Three rounds. There is opportunity for Immortals. There is. Now, you see, Phelps, if you're going to stand that tight to the vent, you have to crouch. Otherwise, you won't see the CT. If, if, the, if the roles are swapped, if Spitty looks at the vent, and uh, the guy in the vent's not crouching. He can see him, he can see his entire body, but the guy in the vent can't see the guy on the low ground. That is, if you remember when uh, FM Pone updated the vents to those new vents from Nuke, that is the change. You need to know that stuff. Otherwise, it could cost you a round. Normally we have two teams facing off, but it's all mouse bots in that half. Lowell and Speedy up there with the kills. Will it continue though? The pistol round is coming our way. And again, Immortals, they have opportunity but really, it will come down to winning the pistol. Yeah, it's been a great performance across the board for the Mouseball side so far. And yeah, as you can see there, it's a 2-1 under the teams. You know, it's first to three. If you lose three, you're done. So another team is done. But again, you qualify if you win this match, if you're Mouseballs or Immortals. So it's a very, very important match, especially if you're Mouseballs, to just get that over with and get the qualification done and not have to go to the final game. That That is just absolutely the goal. So. Mouseballs are set up well to do this, and uh, Immortals are on the CT side now as well, which is a little bit, it's a bit scary because you're at the mercy of what the T decide to do, what Mouseballs decide to do. Especially on the pistol round. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So you do wonder, I mean, Hen Henny's got, he's got that spawn that Christian had earlier. He's got the, pretty much the forward most spawn on the CT side. So maybe he, I mean, he's got a smoke and a diffuse kit, but maybe he goes for a peek towards a main. Maybe they take gambles. They don't have flashbangs. Phelps and Lucas though, they have not bought just yet. So maybe they'll pick some up and uh, flash a teammate in. But they need, they they might feel like they need some early information. In fact, it's all it's all uh, Kevlar apart from any. But again, he's got the Ford spawn. So I'm really curious to see if he goes towards A main to get that early info. Maybe an early headshot. Nope, he's going towards B instead. Here we go. Second half pistol around. Immortals really need this. They got a smoke and a kid on Henny. Everyone else with the Kevlars and Mouse Boss, they're going to go for their classic boost into mid straight away. Phelps will hear this, and they're going to have good tabs as to what they're doing, but they're playing a retake, are immortal. So, oh, Phelps is going to peek out connector. Oh, he gets caught from the side. Thought he was safe. That's a bad, bad look for the immortal side. Already down two men. 
That set up from Aspor, it's almost like a bait in that situation. Dennis with great play, and he's pretty much closed out the round unless Henny's going to get five headshots. Has not revealed his position just yet. There's the first one. Can they find any more? Two plays facing him from the car position, but they don't need to. They don't need to offer themselves. They don't need to duel at ranges that favor that USP. They've all still got Glocks. They know where he is. They've got the numbers game. They can just bide their time and allow Henny to come to them. Have the odd look here and there. Henny can be wallbanged from that position. Maybe not with a Glock, though. But there is a panel, so it's a terrible place for CTs to save. And indeed, he is forced to come to the range of mouseports and they continue to scream. They're going to lose their voices by the end of this game. I have to say that mouse sports, it's, it's good that right now what we just saw was nobody actually trying to close the distance or like try to challenge, as you were saying, because when you're four versus one like that and it's like one CT and you're like, oh, we've won this round. To, as an exercise of discipline, to see them not overextend is great. That's, that's a very good sign, actually. So 13 to three and Immortals with the force buy. So the first test for Mouse Sports after that pistol round, the first uh, one of the first more real tests is how good is their anti force buy today? And he's left, left himself with 1,200. 300 shy of what you would normally have on the CT side when you're looking to buy an AWP later on. So perhaps it will be AWP, no armor, or at least no helmets. Definitely no helmets. Unless he can pick up a kill. 1 minute 20, Marsport's taking it slow. We saw some nice anti-eco executes on overpass from Cloud9. Perhaps we will see one from Marsports as well. They have a ton of utility, a fair amount of Molotovs as well. I do wonder if they'll head towards the A side. They've got lurkers towards both sides for the time being, just keeping tabs on Immortals and their map control. Less than a minute now, using sub Molotovs as a deterrent. Maybe that will draw people towards mid as well. Two players on B, one on the highway as well for the uh, for the CT side. So rotation can be swift. I like how Immortals are not offering themselves up too easily. Forcing Mouseports to go for the play onto the bomb site. That said, the majority of Immortals are towards A. So this is a great pick from Mouseports. Straight into the B bomb site. Lucas has been, has been good with the deagle, but can't find any Nico like clutch shots just yet, but maybe I spoke too soon there. Lucas does get himself a headshot onto Chris J, slows down the push, the bomb is yet to be planted. So a few issues here for Mouseball so far, still quite salvageable though, into a round victory, and Spitty will get himself a good plant that is visible from B storage, and Lil will stay alive towards that position. Steel and Henny, nothing to lose, everything to gain. Matt Dennis in one of those uh, off angles that always takes you by surprise. Spots ahead, but can he get a kill? Ah. He's being double peaked now. Still with a frag. And uh, Lowell has got all of 10 HP. Spitty has to deliver. There's the one kill. Now he can play the trade frag situation with his teammate. They've got a the crossfire on the site. Still running out of time to defuse the bomb. Mouse sports continue their battle cries round after round after round. Two more and they are home free. And all they have to think about is preparing for that big old major in January 2017. It's going to be uh, towards the end of January. I went, I went past the Fox Theatre yesterday. It is vintage, it is classic, it's gorgeous, and it's glorious. And that is where they will get to play. They win two more rounds against Immortals here, and there's uh, plenty of opportunities to do so. They also, have lead. Ar Kelly's there afterwards. Oh, is he? <laughs> I won't be there, but you know. No, no will I. So some of you can stay a bit longer if you, you know, into Kelly. Double Mac 10 for Mouse Wilson this round. Although actually only Henny has no helmet. Everyone else has helmets, so Mac 10s won't be too effective. Maybe they expected a save here or something, I don't know, but uh Dublay Mac 10 will not be too amazing, I don't think. But we'll have to see how it comes into play. Mouse balls, they have lots of options they can go with. Just, you know, a set, just running a set piece after playing somewhat passively towards the start onto the A-bomb site with their current positions would be completely perfect. It'd be fine to do that. They've got loads of mollies. Slow start from Mouse balls. They do not want to make any errors or at least want to minimize them as best they can. They've done a good job so far. 14-3 to three to score tells a story. Dennis holding down the main for the time being still with a long range UMP spray. Only good for the one kill. He will, of course, get traded. Lucas and Henny remain. One UMP, one pistol on this immortal side. Dennis 
likely to go down of only 3 HP, but Nico's there for support. The nade, though, will take Kenny down somewhat prematurely, as far as he's concerned. And now it's Lucas. Got, a, got himself a one dig. There's a potential flank coming in, or, or at least that player, uh, Spitty, can just wait on the highway position. He can be the first to peek. As soon as one person engages, as soon as there's contact, we're going to see at least a double peek, maybe a triple. Lucas repositioning, repositioning to short, maybe, but he doesn't have the range for this, so he's really out of options. This is a horrible situation for him to be in, and now they are facing 12 match points versus Mouse Sports. I'm pretty sure that they can hear that. The ex this excited mouse bot side. It's pretty cool to see. They are one round away from the major. One round away indeed. It's got to feel good. But they still got to take it over the line. And they have all the cash to do that with. They have, of course, to contend with a terrible buy. Just pistols, just a, U a UMP is the only uh, automatic weapon beside the C7, I suppose. So right now it's just... Uh, the Immortals are really hard pressed, they're desperate. And they're going to try to push B storage. Perhaps they've got two players there. They're actually, actually, maybe they're not going to push it and set up aggressively. And Spitty is in a, a position where he can definitely capitalize with his AK. At the same time, Mouse Pulse are occupying A main. Speaking of A main, Phelps has jumped off the boost and he's taken Chris J down. Spotted a bomb as well, but he can't really hold it there. Low in a position to trade, keep the weapons away from the Immortals team. Pop Flash comes in, but Pulse can't find the right angle. And now the opportunity has come and gone. He cannot afford to uh, go again towards lower. More trades towards the side this time, but they're all in favor of Mousebots. It's Henny between Mousebots and the Major, the only man standing. Bomb being planted on A. No weapons for him to collect. Speedy on the flank. And he could take him by surprise if the timing is good. And he can't find a headshot though. He's going to get dinked through the corner. 30 HP. Spitty blind. But he's got support coming in. And it's Lowell to get that last frag. 16 to 3. Elation in Mouseports. They have made it to the Major in Atlanta. That is awesome to see such result. But very unexpected as well. Immortals, they got off to a bad start. And they could never recover. They did just 